Okay. أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلوات الله والسلام عليه تسليما كثيرا وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذنا الله تعالى جميعا من نار جهنم وشدتها Today is the beginning of Sha'ban 1436 years after the Hijrah al-Mubaraka of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca to al-Madina al-Nabawiya and it is the Tuesday in which we have made our Ada to deal with the issue of some of the mistakes that people make concerning the prayers. An issue that it is not acceptable, mayambari, for a person to have a tahawan and a takasul in these particular issues. And as we mentioned previously, this type of daras is a daras of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam as he taught the man in the famous hadith and masi salatuhu the man who came and he made a lot of mistakes during his prayer, and the Prophet wasallam corrected him in what he was doing incorrect. And it was the haq on the Prophet wasallam to correct him because, as we mentioned in many different classes over the years, it is not permissible, it was not permissible for the ta'khir al-bayan, for the Nabi wasallam to remain silent when something took place in his presence and he saw it, he heard about it, or he knew about it, since he was the muballig anillah. It was wajib upon him to give the people the dawah to the religion when they made mistakes. So because we are all from the ansar of his sunnah, insha'Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
And he commanded all of us, بَلِّغُوا anni walu ayat. Tell the people about me, even if it's an ayat, a small thing. Want to touch upon these issues. Because the mistakes of the salat are many. So we dealt with the akhta that the people make as it relates to the place of the prayer. And we also dealt with the akhta that the people make concerning their clothes. So there are many issues that we can deal with, inshallah, as we will come across the more glaring issues. Abrazuha wa avharuha. We come today, inshallah, as we to some of the mistakes that are done concerning al-rukur and as-sujood. And again, ikhwani, these classes are not just so that we can fill up the time between Maghrib and al-isha. If that was the goal and the objective for ni'mah mahiyah, there's a benefit and a good thing by itself. It's not the goal and the objective. The goal and the objective is to make the tanbih and the tafkir for the brothers and the sisters to understand we need to take care of this prayer. We need to take care of the prayer of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who prayed in front of his community and he showed them while they were all sitting witnessing his prayer and then after illustrating how to pray in front of them he told them and commanded them Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sallu kama ra'ayta muni usalli Pray Ya Ummat al-Islam the same way you just saw me pray. He didn't say pray the way you want to pray. He said pray the way you just saw me pray. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Men tawadda'a kama umira, wa salla kama umira, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi. Anyone who makes the wudu the way he was commanded to do it, anyone who performs the prayer the way he was commanded to do it, then he will be forgiven for his sins. And again, tafkiran lakum, he told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna awwala ma yuhasabu bihi al-abdu min a'mali yawm al-qiyamah, as-salat. The very first thing that Allah is going to ask you about yawm al-qiyamah is going to be this prayer. And if you really believe in Allah azza wa jal, you believe that his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent and he is the Nabi and the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi then you have to believe in Yom Al-Akhir. And part of Al-Iman in all of those issues is for a person to take the time out and to make the effort to make the tahseen of his prayer. So today, inshallah, as we will deal with a few issues concerning the Rukur as well as the Sujood. Some of the mistakes. One of the mistakes that people make Concerning the prayer is the kafirat al-haraka wal abith. Some people, when they pray, they move a lot and they move unnecessarily. They make a lot of harakat, and it is just abith, it's unnecessary. As we mentioned to you many times, it is permissible to move in your prayer. It's permissible to move in your prayer to make the islah of your prayer to make the itman and the ikmal of your prayer. He allowed the person, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to kill the scorpion while he's praying, to kill the snake while he's praying. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, picked up his granddaughter, Umama, radiallahu anha, while, she, while he was praying. Hassan, Hussein, while he was praying. He moved to the right, he moved to the left, he grabbed the jinn, sallallahu alayhi wa while he was praying. So we don't want anyone to think that there's a contradiction when we said to you that it is permissible for you to pray and to move in your prayer. And what we're saying today is from what is a mistake to move too much. What we're talking about today is to move unnecessarily. Al-Abith. Al-Abith is doing something that has no benefit in it whatsoever. As for a person, moving to his right, moving to his left, taking a step forward, taking a step backwards, pushing someone to prevent him from crossing between him and his sutra, then all of this is halal, all of this is ma'mura biha in the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. So we're talking about moving and the movements that are not permissible. 
The khushur of the prayer, as we mentioned before, ikhwani, it is the essence of the prayer, and it is also the ruh or the spirit of the prayer. The person has to make jihad to maintain it, to hold on to it. Al khushur. The mechanics are important. Raising your hands, how you do this, how you do that. The mechanics are important. But the khushur, the essence of the prayer is having the khashya of Allah Azza wa Jal and being in communion and communication with Allah Azza wa Jal. And no doubt about it, the more movements that an individual makes, it compromises that khushur. From what is used as a delil for this is the authentic hadith of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was collected by Al-Imam Muslim. Rahmatullahi alayhi. The Prophet prayed, he turned around, he said to the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mali Arakum Rafi Aidikum Fusalat Kaennaha Adnab Khail Shumps Askunu Fusalat. What is wrong with you people that I see you people moving your arms and your hands around in the prayer as if your prayers are like the tails of wild donkeys. So he may incur that the people were moving their hands all around while they were praying. Before showing you the wajhalist dilal of this hadith, the point, the proof of this hadith that is being used to show the impermissibility of al abith and al harakat that are unnecessary in the prayer, let me bring your attention back to our dars last week. We told you last week when it came to Raf Uliyadain, 50, Khamsun, from the companions, Radhi Allah Anhum Ajma'in, Khamsun, they narrated that the Prophet وسلم, raised his hand in four different places. Khamsun, and from those Khamsin, 10 of them, 10 of them are the 10 people who were promised Al Jannah. May Allah Ta'ala put us with them in the Jannah, without any adab and without any hisab. I told you that the people who reject this issue of raf'ul yadain from our fellow Muslim brothers, and we say specifically from the Ahnaf, from the people who are from Al-Kufa, Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, they used to use proofs that were authentic, but they were not given the re- the the proofs that they use were weak. They're not proving the point. Or they use things that were not authentic. As I mentioned to you, they said that in the beginning of Islam, the Prophet told them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to do raf al because under their arms there were some idols. So he told them to do raf al so the idols can fall. That's kedib. Your mother, your father, your relatives, the masjid you come from, those people who taught you that, they are making kedib alallahi wa rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And people should be shy. They be, should be shy to continue after 1,436 years to still be holding on to that nonsense. That along with other fabricated a hadith. But what is authentic is this hadith from Sahih Muslim that they use. The Nabi, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is wrong with you people that you are moving your hands in the prayer as if you are wild? They are like wild, the tails of wild donkeys. So this authentic hadith shows you shouldn't move your hand in salat. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ By hook or crook. Some people want to use the Quran and the Sunnah to support and to prove what they're saying. What the Nabi was addressing in this hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is what we see in the prayers every day in every masjid. Where the guy is praying and he's taking his glasses off and he's looking at his glasses. Where the person is praying and he's taking his pen out of his hand, out of his pocket and looking at the pen. Where the individual is playing with his lehya. Where he's taking his hat and he turns it around like this, prays when rakat gets up and he turns it around a second time and all of the prayer that he's doing that. Obviously, the Nabi... And those people during his time, they didn't have glasses, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but you get the point. The person today taking his mobile phone and he looks this way and he looks that way to make sure that it's his same Samsung 
that he began the prayer with. That's what this hadith is talking about, Abu Asim. What is it that I see you people moving your hands around as if your hands are like the tails of wild donkeys, akramakum Allah, and the tail of the wild donkey, it makes abath. It moves around like that for no apparent reason. And then at the end of the hadith, he said, Salawatullahi wa salam wa and this is the shahid, askinu the salat. Relax, take it easy. Have sakina in prayer. Don't move around. Don't make any movements that are unnecessary. So this hadith in Sahih Muslim, it commands that you take it easy in your prayer. There is an unauthentic hadith, many of them, but the most famous one that you will read in the books of Al-Fiqh, Hanbali Fiqh, Hanafi Fiqh, especially the Hanafi Fiqh and other than that, where it brings a hadith that he says, Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam, according to them, there was a man who was praying and he kept moving, messing around with his beard, wiping the water off of his lihya, messing with his lihya, fixing his collar, doing this thing like this, like that. It said that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Lo khashia hadha, la khashiat jawarihu. If this person had khashia, if he had khawf in his prayer, then his limbs would have feared Allah. His limbs would have feared Allah. The meaning of that is partly true because al-iman with ahl sunnah it consists of three things. Al-iman is to say with your tongue, I believe. Al-iman is to believe in your heart. And al-iman is that your limbs are going to manifest what is in your heart. So if that person had the khashi of Allah in his heart, then his limbs would have also gotten with the program and they would have been sakina with sakina. But the hadith itself is mawdu'a. The hadith is not authentic. And we don't need the hadith that is not authentic. وَمَاذَا بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَى الضلال. What is after the truth except falsehood? The Prophet said what he said in our religion. Everything that he said that came to us and is authentic is kafin. Kifaya. We don't need anything else. We don't need weak hadith to support the haq. We don't need kedhib to support the truth. Remember that principle. Don't lie on your opponent. If you are lying on your opponent from the non-Muslims, from your Muslim brothers who you don't agree with, if you're lying on him to prove a point, then there's something wrong with your understanding. There's something wrong with you. Your khabith. There's something wrong. What is after the truth except falsehood? So we don't need that weak hadith. It is not permissible for a person to pray and he's making too many movements that are unnecessary. The harakat that are za'ida, there are too many, no need for them, or there is no benefit to them because the Prophet commanded sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam for a person to take it easy. Number two from the mistakes, and we'll get into this in more detail, inshallah, when we will deal with the mistakes that come when people are praying salat al jamaah And I see that the brother has left, so I'm going to mention this right now. I saw a new brother, a revert brother. He's been a Muslim for only a short period of time. Brother introduced me to him, and he left. Both of them are gone. That brother prayed in front of me today. Not that I'm the muraqib. He prayed in front of me today, and praying in front of me, he disturbed from his many movements the people who are behind him. And then after the salat, the brother came to me and he said, this brother is so-and-so, he's a new Muslim. So we understand his situation. He's praying and he doesn't know what's going on, so he may look to the right, may look to the left. He seems a little bit out of place because he's learning. The people who move a lot, they are those people who are like that. They have an other, they have an excuse. Or the person who was just jahil. So we've been Muslims 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, you've been a Muslim a long time, and you claim a salafiya, and you're claiming that you're on the sunnah, then have some discipline in your prayer. And don't move too much. From those mistakes, Akhwani is the way some of the people read Surah Al-Fatiha. 
The person who reads Surah Al-Fatiha with one tanafus. He reads Alhamdulillah Rabbil al- 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 Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen all the way to the end in one breath. He doesn't give the Haruf, the Haq, and he doesn't read with Al Khushur, and he doesn't read like a person who's standing before Allah Azza wa Jal. This is from Al Abith. This is from the movements that are a waste of time. That's Al Abith in the Arabic language. If a person was sitting down and he was picking up stones and he was plucking stones, that is Al Abith. There's no benefit from that. The Prophet saw a man doing that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Don't do that. Because it has no benefit in it. It doesn't help in al jihad. It will not harm the enemy. But what you're going to do is you're going to knock someone's eye out accidentally, inadvertently, or you're going to break someone's tooth. That's al abith. A person is sitting for al jumuah and the imam, the khatib, comes out, he starts giving the khutbah, and this person is playing around with rocks that are in front of him, for an example. He's picking his toes and taking the tail note, the, the toenails off of his foot. That is al-abith. So that's what we mean by al-harakat and al-abith. Those actions that have no benefit to them whatsoever. And from them, reading the Quran in the way where the person is just trying to get through the recitation. But we'll come to that, inshallah, in a little bit more detail later on. Next point, this is really important. Inshallah, I hope you brothers pay attention. And I hope you brothers are convinced to at least take this point of view or go back and study it. Because many people concerning this particular issue, they don't know that this issue even exists in the minds of the ulama of Islam, the fuqaha of Islam. Especially those brothers who our parents are from the Shafi'iyya, our brothers from Somalia, like uh, the Zaim and the Ra'is and the Amir of the Somali people, our brother Khalid. People come from Somalia, they don't even know. This is from the Shafi'i Madhab. Al Imam al Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, established this, fought for it, put it out there, gave the delil for it, and the people don't know. And it appears that this is the haq from the mistakes that people make concerning the prayer is when the imam comes up and he says, Sami Allah liman hamidahu. The person who's following him only says, Rabbana walak alhamd. Rabbana walak alhamd. There is a hadith where the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the qal al-imam, Sami Allah liman hamidahu, faqulu Rabbana walak alhamd. If the imam says, Allah hears those who hear who praise his name, then you should say, and to you, my Lord, is the praise. Al-Imam al nawi rahimahullah ta'ala, along with those ulama from the Shafi'iyya and other than them, they were of the opinion that when the Imam says, Sami Allah liman hamidahu, you who is following the Imam should also say, Sami Allah liman hamidahu. And not just say, Rabbana walak alhamd. Now, there's a hadith that says, if the Imam says, Sami Allah liman hamidahu, you should say, Rabbana walak alhamd. But the companions who described the prayer of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions, they said, when the Nabi used to lead the prayer, when the Prophet used to make the prayer by himself, when the companions used to make the prayer, when the Nabi said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sami Allah Liman Hamida, all of the people used to say, Sami Allah Liman Hamida, Rabbana Walak al Hamd. So this is a point that many people, you won't learn this point, you won't hear this point if you're not reading about the prayer. Now I know that we have some students here who they know this, Alhamdulillah. But for those of you who never heard this, this is a position as we mentioned. And what's the delil? We just mentioned the delil. The delil is that the companions, when they pray behind the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said both things. They just didn't stop with, Rabbana walak alhamd. They said, Sami Allah liman hamida. 
Rabbana walakal hamd. So the Imam says it, and you said what he said, and then in addition to that, you follow what he commanded, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And from the dalil is the hadith that we mentioned already, sallu kama ra'itumuni usalli. Pray the way that I have commanded you to pray. From the mistakes, Ikhwani, is also the adam etu'matnina in the prayer. The fact that people are not taking it easy and they're not relaxing and they have a sakina and a tu'matnina. Some of the ulama, they said if an individual does not take it easy in his prayer and he's going up and down, they said that his salat, his salat is batila, doesn't count. He has to do it again. And this is the prayer of a lot of people. The way the person prayed, the way the child prayed, the man, the wife, the way the people pray, it's just a prayer just to get done with it, to get it in the books, and that's it. But a tu'manina is from the arkan of the prayer. It's from the arkan. And the rukan, like the arkan of Islam, the scholars gave the tarif of, of the rukan. They said a rukan is janab al qawi. It is the side or the portion of a thing that is strong. If you take the pillar away, then the thing that is predicated, the thing that is built upon it, the thing that is resting upon it, then it in of itself is compromised. It's not there. You don't pray, you're not a Muslim. You don't do the shahadatain, you're not a Muslim, you're a kafir, mushrik. You don't make hajj and you have the ability to make so, make the hajj, you're not a Muslim. You don't fast in the month of Ramadan that is coming, inshallah, and you have the ability to do it, and you just don't do it, then you're not a Muslim. You're outside of the pale, outside of the fold of Al-Islam. That's the opinion of the majority of the ulama of Al-Islam. From what they prove to show this point are a number of a hadith. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, may Allah be pleased with him. He saw a man praying and the man did not take time in record. He went to record and he came right up. He went into sajda and he came right up, going back and forth. He did that. Who they for the companion, the one who was in knowledge and possession of the secret of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet told who they for his secret sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anybody know what the secret was that Hudayfa told, that the Prophet Wasallam told Hudayfa, my man Abdul Qadir. He told him the names of the Munafiqeen. Hudayfa, when he saw this man praying the way he prayed, he said to that man, Radi Allah anhu, ma salita, walu mitta, mitta ala ghayr al fitra, alati fatr Allahu alayha Muhammadan. He said, you didn't pray, mister. Hey, you didn't pray. And if you died making the prayer the way you're making it, you would have died upon the fitrah other than the one that the Prophet ﷺ was created upon. Another proof for the people who think this is an easy issue, is praying like that. Another proof is the guy or the man, the companion, may Allah be pleased with him, al Masi salatahu. The man who came in and he prayed very quickly, going up and down, up and down. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Then he went to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, assalamu alaikum ya rasulullah. He said, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah, irja fa salli, fa inna kalam tu salli. Go back and pray because you didn't pray. He didn't allow him, he didn't allow him to just be comfortable with, he didn't know what he was doing and he just left it like that. There are certain things that if a person doesn't do it the right way, or if he does it in the wrong numbers, he does it in the wrong place, is going to be rejected. One of the companions of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa radiyallahu anhum ajma'in wa ardahum, he slaughtered the dhabiha before the salat of al-Eid, for the Eid al-Udha, Eid al-Adha. He slaughtered. When he told the Prophet about him, about what he did, he says, Salat shatuka shat al That meat is just for you and your family. Eat it. But you have to slaughter again 
because you slaughtered before Salat, al Salat of Al Eid. Your Udhiya is at the wrong time. So you have to slaughter again. You did it in the wrong way, the wrong number, the wrong place. So the Nabi وسلم, told that man who didn't know, and ignorance was not an excuse for this man. He said to him, Go back and pray because you did not pray. Another Dalil, not one, not two, but another Dalil is the hadith of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Qal La Tuzi Salatu Raju Hatta Yaqim Dahrahu Firroku Sajud. A person's prayer is not going to be rewarded. It won't be acceptable. It won't be correct until that individual he makes his rukur where he's taking his time and he makes his back straight. He makes sajda and in sajda he's taking his time and he's relaxed and he's in that position. As for the one who goes down and he comes up, he goes to sajda and he sits up, goes to sajda, la salat lahu. Not only is there no prayer for him but He's been described as having two characteristics that are a mushkila. To do that is a kabira from the kabair. It's not enough that he just made a mistake. It's a big sin. One of his descriptions is, that's the salat of the munafiqeen. وَإِذَا قَامُوا لَلصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا kusala. They are lazy when they stand for prayer, have no discipline, they don't care. It's not important. Let me just get it in the books. And the other thing is, he mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that that person is a sadiq, that person is a thief, he's a criminal. He's not just like any everyday thief, like some of the Muslim kids who come to the local store on the way to school, on the way from school, and they're stealing things and sweets, and the Muslim owner of the store every day is in drama with these kids, every day. He's not just a thief like that. Someone who goes into our goals and he goes into here, goes in there, and the people are not paying attention, so he walks out with a five finger discount. Not that individual. He's worse than that. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Asraqu Raju, Aladi Yasuku, Min Salatihi, La Yakimu, Raku Aha, Wada Sajudaha. The biggest thief, the biggest criminal as it relates to thievery and stealing, is the one who steals from his prayer. He doesn't make the rukur and takes his time the way it should be made. And he doesn't make sajda and takes his time the way that time should be taken. He's a sadiq. So not only is his salat batila, her salat is batila, but they've been given the description of being from the munafiqeen and the munafiqat, and they also have been described as being criminals. From that, ikhwani, another very important issue is something people add on to the prayer, from the mistakes of the prayer. The person, he says, Sami Allah liman hamida. And then he says, Rabbana wa lakal hamd wa shukr. Rabbana wa lakal hamdu wa shukr. And they add on wa shukr. This is a mistake. It shouldn't be added on. Someone may come and they may say, not in our Majlis al Mubarak, inshallah, but someone else may come and say, what's the problem with was shukr? As shukr is jameel, it's beautiful, and Allah Azza wa Jalla, He loves a shukr. What's wrong with that? The problem with it is when you give me some water to drink and you give me something, you hear me that, you bring the chair and I say, shukran. That's outside of the deen. It's nothing that Allah legislated other than al-ihsan. One person to another person. Shukran. Jazakallah khair. Afwan. No problem. But when you start putting this stuff inside of the religion, then you start to add on the religion. And when you add on to religion or you subtract the religion, it is as if you're saying, Allah Azza wa didn't know what he was doing. Wa ma kana rabbuka nasiya. Allah didn't forget he knew what he was doing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam asked his companions, did I relay the message? They say, you relay the message. So the deen is not in need of Amr, Bakr, Zaid, after 1,436 years, after to come and add something in and say, this is good, as al-Imam al-Shafi'i said. Al-Istihsan. 
He said, من استحسن فقد شرع. Anyone who comes up with his own opinion because it feels good, smells good, looks good, makes sense, he has legislated in the deen of Allah. And for this reason, the vast majority of ulama of Islam, they reject al-istihsan, the Quran, the sunnah, al-ijma, al-qiyas, and then there's a lot of ikhtilaf. There's some ikhtilaf in qiyas, but not after the things that come. The statement of the companion. The istihsan, al-musal al-mursala. Al-istihsan, what is istihsan? For the most part, it's that thing that when you look at it, it makes sense. When you look at the nature and the spirit of al-Islam, there's more to it than that. It's not the daras for this issue. But al-istihsan, al-imam al-shafi rejected it. He said, anyone who comes with this claim, al-istihsan makes halawa haram, makes halal halal haram haram, he has legislated in the deen of Allah Azza wa What is the dalil for that? Dalil so much, so much. When I tuck for my laysa laka bi ilm, don't put your foot somewhere where you have no dalil for it. Don't do that. What I taqulu li ma tasifu al sinatukum al kadib. هذا حلال وهذا حرام تفترون على الله الكذب. Don't go and say that you have no knowledge and no proof about this halal, this is haram, and you make lies on Allah. So don't say a shukr. There's a companion, his name is Al Bara'u ibn Azib. May Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet said to him, Hey, Al Bara', what do you say before you go to sleep at night? He said, Allah and his messenger know best. We'll deal with that another time, inshallah. What do you say before you go to sleep? And this is a proof as I'm telling someone who's pretty close to me. When I ask you a question and I tell you to tell me that question, don't get nervous and don't pack your bags in and don't give up. The Prophet used to want the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to use their brains he used to want them to ignite within themselves what you already know. Make an effort. Don't be so scared and afraid if someone came and said, what do you think about this? Think about that. Sharif says to his wife, hey, sister, Amatullah, what do you think about this? That? She says, I don't know. Allah, don't, don't be like that. Take your time. Breathe in, out. Take it easy and do your best. Try to answer the question. And then if it doesn't come to your mind, say, Allahu A'lam. Ya al-Bara ibn Azib, what do you say when you go to bed? He said, Allah and, and his messenger know best what I say before I go to bed. Hazir Nazir. Hazir Nazir. No, that's not Delil for Hazir Nazir. Me, I'm going to hit somebody over his head. He said, it's Delil for Hazir Nazir. We're going to deal with that, inshallah. He said, I'll tell you what you should say. First, make the wudu that you make for your salat. And then lie at the beginning of the night. On your right side. Lie on your right side. As for if the individual at the end of the night, the middle of the night, quarter, third of the night, he winds up on the other side, on his stomach, on his back. Sharif, shouldn't hit his wife over the head because she's on the left side in the middle of the night. No. <laughs> make the wudu. <laughs> lie on the right side. And before going to bed, make the dua. Allahumma inni aslamtu nafsi ilayk wa wajjahtu wajhi ilayk wa fawwattu amri ilayk Oh Allah, I submit my soul to you and I also turn my face to you. I turn my face to you. I'm on my right side. I turn my face to you. And my affairs, I put all of my affairs in your hands. رَغْبَةً وَرَحْبَةً إِلَيْكَ وَأَلْجَأْتُ ظَهْرِ إِلَيْكَ لَا مَلْجَأْ وَلَا مَنْجَ مِنْكَ إِلَّا إِلَيْكَ Oh Allah, I put my back, all of the affairs I don't know about. I put all of my affairs, what I know, what I don't know, in your hands. You're responsible for it. And I do this hoping for you. I'm afraid of you. I'm hoping in you. And there is no hope. And there is no protection except in you and not from away from you and not away from you. And then he said, and this is the shahid, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
آمَنْتُ بِكِتَابِكَ الَّذِي أَنْزَلْتَ وَنَبِيِّكَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلْتَ I believe in the book that you revealed. And I believe in your Nabi that you sent. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After saying this dua one time, he said, now repeat it back. The companion showing how serious they looked and they paid attention, he repeated everything back. The same way. Everything. But he changed one thing. Instead of saying, I believe in the Nabi that you sent, he said, I believe in the Rasul that you sent. When he said, I believe in the Rasul that you sent, the Prophet said, I believe in the Nabi. But he said, I believe in the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa radiyallahu anhu. The Prophet did like this. Say, I believe in the Nabi. Say, I believe in the Nabi. So that goes to show there's a distinction between a Rasul and there's a difference between the Nabi and the Rasul. There's a difference. And it also goes to show, do your best, Abdullah, to memorize the dua the way it's said. To memorize the Quran the way it's said. Sometimes we can make mistakes. The masajid are only for Allah. Wa the person says, Wa inna. Someone in the audience says, Wa anna, and he corrects them. Just relax, because what that person said is correct. Say the Quran, say the Sunnah to the best of your ability. And if you get it wrong and someone gets you right, instead of inna is anna. Instead of anna is inna. No problem. Try to say the ayahs, especially correctly. As for the hadith, try to say them correctly. And this incident in this hadith is one of the hadith that the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, they used it. The ulama of Ahlul Hadith, may Allah make us from Ahlul Hadith. Those scholars were of the opinion if you don't know the hadith, you shouldn't mention it by its meaning. And that's why when people read the Quran, when they're given a lesson, they may say, and Allah said in the Quran, in what the meaning is. And the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in what the meaning is. It's like ziyada in a tahaffud. So anyway, the point here is, the Nabi didn't allow him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to say, al-rasul, when it was for the dua of going to sleep. So what about the salat that he spent so much time teaching them the salat from the beginning to the end? Sami Allah liman hamida Allahumma rabbana wa lakal hamd Just stop right there and don't say was shukr. We're going to stop here inshallah azawajal. Salat al-isha these days are not too far away. If you brothers have any questions concerning today's daras, We'll take your questions until 10.15. Before I forget, Brother Sharif, our brother, he sent me a text message after the class last week. I mentioned to you about the issue of looking up in the sky and things like that. He sent me a text message showing that this hadith is inside Bukhari and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he prohibited people. When you come up and the imam comes up, that a person comes up before the imam. He raises the imam. The imam is on semi Allah. And this person is coming up. Because the companions were a group of people who they would not, may Allah be pleased with them, make any movements until Rasulullah wasallam took his total position. They wouldn't start for sajda until he was down. You look in the masjids, discipline or lack thereof. So the shahid is, Brother Sharif, you sit me this hadith that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, anyone who raises the imam or he perceives the imam, wouldn't he be scared that his face would be turned into a donkey? And Imam al-Bukhari brought that hadith. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala brought the story of the sheikh whose face was turned into a donkey. We're going to deal with that inshallah in more detail. But I just want to acknowledge that we are not against anybody here. Correcting, advising, disagreeing, discussing, and debating. We just ask for our students to do it with edip, whether it's with me or other than me, just do it with edip. You'll find some people, they'll come to your page in Facebook. You have a page in Facebook. 
He has nothing better to do but to come to someone else's Facebook page to be disruptive and to be nasty. Yeah, if that's what you believe in, go over there with them bros, man, and deal with that over there. We don't have time for that. Go over there with the mutaasibin. Go over there with the hulat, man. We we don't have time for that. As for this page right here, feel free to come and to make inkar and to give dawah and to agree and to disagree and to criticize constructively. As for all of this disruptive stuff with tashayyo, you're coming over here to tell us about Shiaism? Hey, man, go get a life, man, and go do that somewhere else. And the same thing here, just with adab. And akhlaq. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Afwan ya akhi sharif, we mentioned you today a lot about your wife and you know all that kind of stuff. Man. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> hey, I want to thank you brothers, those of you who gave me love about my sickness and everything like that. And, uh, may Allah bless you brothers. Hayyakum Allah.